Howdy, rock stars. Lid Shaw, welcome to Recording Studio Rock Stars. Uh, I want to welcome two guests on this video with me as well Chris Graham from Chris Graham Mastering and Bjorgvin Benedictson from audioissues.com. Thanks for being here, guys. Really psyched to have you. Uh, there's my phone binging, and there's a good <laughs> reason for that because yeah. I have a, a bit of breaking news to share with you today. This is this is an emergency broadcast from Recording Studio Rockstars, um, and it pertains very specifically and directly to me and my home studio right here in East Nashville, Tennessee, but um, broadly to all home studios here in Nashville. And I think it extends to all of you with home studios everywhere, um, hopefully not quite in the same way that it does to me. So um, welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, our pleasure, man. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to have you guys here because I wanted to tell you what's going on. I thought, uh, who better to share this breaking news with than uh, my best friends from Recording Studio Rockstars and, and all the rock stars out there watching and listening to this, too. Um, so let me just kind of start at the beginning. I mean, you guys know a little bit about what's going on, but uh, our listeners won't yet. Mm, um, yeah. We've been, we've been uh, privy to some information and, and history in, the, in our calls, weekly, weekly calls for sure. Yeah, exactly. And it's been killing me not to be able to share uh, <laughs> what's been happening with me, with everybody uh, listening on the podcast, watching through the YouTube channel. Uh, but I was under strict instructions to wait until the time was right, because today I just did a full press conference downtown in Nashville with uh, ABC News this morning, NBC, Fox 17 was there, um, local newspapers and radio, because I filed a lawsuit against the city of Nashville for shutting down my home studio. So mm. it's a bit of a shocker, but let me back up and kind of fill you guys so in. You and can't, you so you can't make is. music in Music City, is that correct? Is yeah. that what we're hearing here? Yeah, that is the uh, the big struggle is the question is like, can you make music in Music City? You really, you really, you can't, you know, you can't do this from your home studios. So um, crazy. What yeah. it turns out to be is um, there is a restriction in Nashville, Tennessee, believe it or not, right here in the heart of Music City that says if you are working from your home, if you want to have a home business, you can't see a customer or a client over. So this means that if you have a home studio and you're trying to record people and record music in your home, um, it's technically not allowed. It's illegal to have a musician come over and record people playing the music together in your home studio, which is obviously nuts. You know, that's crazy. Um, but could and, you do it for free? Right. So so let me clarify that. <laughs> the specification is if they're a customer. So that means you can have somebody come over and you can record them in your home. But if they hand you a dollar bill at the end and say, thanks for recording me, that that would technically be illegal. So mm, it's, it's bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> but let me back up and, and tell you guys the story because I really want to kind of tell yeah. uh, you know the backstory to how this all happened. So... Um, Right about the time I launched Recording Studio Rockstars in 2015, um, I think it was right in uh, August of 2015, was when I launched the website and I started the podcast and everything, and the first episode started to come out. I was doing a, a session um, down here. I was mixing mixing a record, and, and I finished for the day, and I was all excited to go out on a beautiful day and go for a run. Um, as you guys know, I'm way into barefoot running, so I was headed to the local park to go for a barefoot run. And so I, weird. I walked up to the, uh, the front of the house and uh, checked the mail, and I pulled out this letter, and it said it was from Nashville Department of Codes, from the Metro Department of Codes. And I opened it up, and I was like, what's this? And I opened it up, and it was a cease and desist letter for my oh. studio right here in East Nashville. It basically said, um, we think you are working out of your home studio, operating as a commercial studio, and so you have to cease and desist. And obviously that scared the crap out of me. Um, I couldn't sleep for a week. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I remember I was that time. Freaking mm -hmm. out. I didn't even know what to do or what that meant or like what what I was supposed to do about this cuz obviously um you know I was completely all in to be able to make records for my home studio, 
I'm I'm 50 now. I moved here when I was 23 years old. And when, you know, I moved here to learn how to record music. And one of the things that I also learned from Nashville was that, you know, people have home studios. Like everybody knows that home studios are the, they're, they're like the fabric. They're the lifeblood. They are the uh, birthplace of music right here in Nashville in Music City. And so this is like where music starts and, and mm. how it gets out and, and how songs are, are written together, how demos are created, how records are created for independent artists, you know? Yeah. And I think like with more home studios, that's just an, ex that's just more creativity, which means like more industry in the city of Nashville, which is sh known for its music. So it yeah. seems sort of backwards. I'd be so way. interested to hear like a figure, how many home studios yeah. are there in Nashville Metro? Oh man. I think there are, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. Um, and I don't even know. One I of think the it's things gotta that be these, higher than that. Yeah. People like, and, and I'm sure that there's some people uh, that are definitely not thinking of the unintended consequences of these actions of shutting down home studios, basically draining a high percentage of the creativity out of Nashville, just to, you know, just to satisfy some some legal definition, which is true broadly defined. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it, it applies to all home businesses too. So um, anybody who's just trying to simply make a living from their home, you know, just, I mean, isn't that kind of what we do now in the, in the modern, you know, internet 2.0 age Yeah. is, is, um, you know, you use the internet, you interact with people, you maybe, uh, you know, there was a great story about a woman who was um, making and embroidering and selling pillows, I think it was. And she likes to, she does a lot of it through the internet, but then when a customer wants to come get a pillow or see the pillow, they would come over to her home. And, you know, she talked about how it's, it would be insane to not be able to do that from her house in Nashville. So, uh, so let me keep telling mm. you guys the story. So yeah. I got this cease and desist letter and, um, it freaked me out and I didn't know what to do. And I started talking to people and consulting and trying to figure out what to do. And um, uh, within a month, I received a phone call. I, I just I was actually taking a nap in the uh, in the living room one day, and um, phone rang. I picked it up and I was like, "Hello," you know. And it was the inspector from City Codes, uh, Nashville City Codes. Mm. And I was like, uh, you know, so so I talked to her. And I was like, "Yeah, oh yeah, sorry, I, I got your letter, and I'm I'm trying to be in compliance and figure out what this means and what I'm supposed to do." And, uh, you know, what do you from, need from me? And she said, um, well, you know, are you ready to schedule an inspection? And I was like, oh, inspection, what are you talking about? And she said, well, we'll come down there and uh, we'll do a walkthrough of your, your premises, your home, and we'll verify that all recording equipment has been removed from the premises. And I was just oh, like, what? That's... What are you talking about? <laughs> so what? Obviously you that... can't even like recording now? Like yeah, exactly. You can't even like buy like, it as a hobby. I was like, "What are you talking about? I I have a home studio. You know, this is like uh, I'm I'm trying to do whatever I can to be in compliance with what what you need me to do." And you know, um, so she pulls out the internet and she starts beating me up about my website and stuff. And she's like, "I see here on your website that you you know you have a video on there where you are you know welcoming people to make a record with you and and come to your studio. You're going to have to take that down." And then, um, oh. you know, she made me take down my rates page. So I was trying to, you know, have, you know, let people know what I could do for them for, for different rates and uh, made me take that down. Um, and uh, worst of all, too, she made me shut down my YouTube channel. So I had a YouTube channel called Stereo Sessions where I would have local bands and artists come in and, and they'd perform and we'd all go out there and videotape with iPhones and um, – people in the other bands would uh would shoot them and stuff and so it was really simple i mean it wasn't you know it was just like a small collection of us here having a having a good time playing songs nashville style mm. and um and people videotaping it and then i put those videos together and put them up on youtube and she told me i couldn't do that anymore you know so what is what is past creative content that you've created with other bands have to do with you soliciting like it's just that's just yeah 
<laughs> yeah. So it was pretty nuts, you know? Um, but of course I was like, okay, yes, ma'am, I'll do whatever I need to do because, you know, I, I don't want to get in trouble, uh, because it was pretty scary stuff. You know, um, there were, there were threats of fines, um, for, you know, for doing this stuff. And, um, so then I, she said, we hung up with that first phone call and, and she told me that she would check about the, uh, removing all the equipment. And so she calls back and, um, left me a message and she said, okay, I, I spoke to my supervisor and, um, you don't have to remove all your equipment, but if we, uh, get another, uh, another complaint about you recording anybody other than yourself, and that includes podcasting, we will immediately take That's, you to court and file a warrant. So she's just making up shit as she goes on. Like that's yeah. probably that's definitely not written in the law. Yeah. Well, the like, insanity I don't even know where the stuff came from. Right. The insanity of that is she's clearly uh, power tripping here. Yeah. But yeah. then the city council of Nashville backed her up. And yeah. and didn't they didn't cease and desist? That's insane that they wouldn't recognize that at this moment there are young kids all over the country that are considering moving to Nashville that saw the video that you posted that's going viral right now about the uh, local news that the local news report did on this. There are kids right now that are watching that video and are like, "Well, I was thinking about moving to Nashville. I'm not going to anymore." Yeah, it's pretty nuts. That's you insane. Know, so I was saying that my phone's blowing up. Um, last night I did, uh, a shoot or yesterday I did a shoot here with, with channel five news. They came and did a short segment and they showed it last night. And I just took my phone and I shot a video from the living room couch, you know, up of the TV. And then I posted that on Facebook and shared it with everybody to let them know what was going on about this, this, um, you know, Nashville bringing the hammer down on home studios and, uh, and just what was, what was happening. And, it just started getting all these views and I went to sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, I think last time I checked, it had about 15,000 views on it overnight. So mm. everybody's commenting and sharing. I mean, there are so many people that are affected by this. This is at the core of the music community here in Nashville. You know, there are um, people who are, who are making a life out of making music, making records, being able to work together and being able to do this in a really affordable way from their homes instead of, mm. you know, having to do everything only through, I mean, the days of, you know, I'm going to make music. And so a major label is going to give me a huge budget and I'm going <laughs> to go into a, a, an expensive recording studio. Um, yeah, right. You know, those, those don't exist in the same way that they might have in the past. I mean, it exists on a certain level. And, and there are, of course, amazing facilities here in Nashville and commercial studios that are absolute top notch. But for most independent musicians, and especially for musicians who are starting out, you know, who are making their first records and, and co-writing their first songs together and recording their first demos, um, you know, they can't necessarily afford that. I mean, that's, I mean, who's, yeah. you know, not everybody's right. got a, a thousand, two thousand, multiple thousands of dollars a day to just go in and, and start recording. So that's, you know, that's what I, that's, that's what my goal was as a home studio was to be able yeah. to offer an affordable place with independent musicians where I could work with them, really pour my heart and soul into the music just like they are, and and it would you know work in the end, that they could afford to make a record, um, I could afford to feed my child and, and stay in my home, you know, and, and uh, keep the music community going here. Oh, crazy. I mean, we, like, the industry has been democratized to such an extent, like you were talking about earlier, that we were able to do this in the home studios and now this and as as a sort of a democratic socialist from Europe with uh, a lot of bigger views and uh, about the benefits of big government certainly more so than Chris Graham over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably I true. believe in the benefits of big government but this seems like this is an example of just government coming in and destroying people's livelihoods yeah it's totally nuts yeah well so let's see so um, you know, I got this threatening, I had the, the, the call where she threatened to come down and remove all my stuff. And then I, and then I got the message afterwards saying, okay, well, you don't have to remove your stuff, but you know, you, you, you make one wrong move and, and we'll file a warrant and take you to court. Um, now you need to understand that the codes only will come and, and, you know, come down on somebody if, if there is a complaint filed, 
But the way that complaint is filed in Nashville is totally anonymous. It's an anonymous, uh, it, somebody just goes to a website form on their website. I don't even think they necessarily have to put in their name and identify themselves. So it's like this anonymous turn in your friends and neighbors kind of. Right. So they're uh, putting a, they're putting you in a situation where you mistrust your neighbors now too. Well, mm. you know, I mean, it certainly uh, made me wonder if I had done something to bother my neighbors. Um, but honestly, and I'm fast forwarding a little bit here, I went around and I door knocked and I talked to all my neighbors. I mean, I already knew most all of my neighbors. I mean, by the time this had happened, I had probably made, uh, at last calculation, uh, 15 of my neighbors in the neighborhood had made records with me, literally being able to walk over and work together. <laughs> so it was a little absurd. Um, but, you know, the thing about the anonymous stuff, too, is that, like, you know, people ask all these questions usually when I talk about this, where they say, well, well maybe it was a, a neighbor complaint. I was like, OK, well, that's speculation. I haven't been able to find a neighbor who had a complaint um, who wanted to tell me about it, uh, had great, great relations with all my neighbors. Um, of course, it's a professionally soundproof studio. So noise is not a complaint. I mean, there is the noise doesn't leave the studio. It's it's designed to not be noisy. In fact, mm -hmm. A block behind me across the way there is a, a train track that runs through East Nashville, and it's the loudest train horn <laughs> you've ever heard going like every 30 minutes or something like that. So, you know, and then and then a block in the other direction is an auto diesel college with a, a big parking lot where um, all the students rev their race car engines all day long. So it's definitely not mm. a not a noise thing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, when I went to uh, to go talk to the Metro Council about my home studio, um, which again I'll, I'll get more to this in a second. I had uh, this is the City Council of Nashville, the, the yeah. ruling organization. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll sort of explain what what comes next here in a moment. But I went and I talked to all the neighbors, and I, I knocked on doors, and I and I brought around a petition, and I have forty signatures on a petition of support for my immediate neighbors on all sides. Uh, they mm. wrote in like seven personal letters in support of of my rezoning. Uh, so I'm giving giving that away. But rezoning, I tried to go rezone my property um, down the road a little ways uh, to see if I could actually just make it legal for me to have my home studio uh, in my residence. And um, you know, 15 of the neighbors came out and and actually showed support at the Metro Council meetings, um, and that still didn't work. So, hmm. you know, it, clearly it wasn't a neighbor issue. Um, so then the next thought is people say like, oh, well, maybe it was like, you know, um, competition or something. Right. And then I think about that and I scratch my head. I'm like, I'm like, really? You know, like a, little, a home studio is competition for um, a big commercial facility or as if there's like a big coalition of, you know, commercial studios that are that would be against it. I just find that hard to believe. I mean, I, I bet. I'd be willing to bet that most commercial studio owners also have a home studio of some sort and also have customers come over and, and record or interact in their home studios as well. So yeah. I really right. doubt that that's it. Um, and when I think about things that happened in the neighborhood that could have caused this too, I think about like, what's the, the biggest change in the neighborhood? Um, really the biggest change in the past few years of, you know, five years or whatever has been just an explosion of development and uh, houses getting torn mm. down and new houses being built. And, um, you know, I regularly receive letters in my mailbox, you know, in sort of fake crayon handwriting, you know, we want to buy your, my wife and I want to buy your house for cash, you know, these sort of manufactured mm. things. So I don't know, you know, my point is that like, they're all just speculation because it's totally anonymous and you don't know what it was about. Um, in fact, when city codes came and, and um, gave me the slap down for this, they don't even tell me what I did wrong. They just say, because we see these things that look like evidence to us of you having a commercial studio, we you, you're not allowed to do that. So you have to shut everything down and cease and desist. So, Interesting. so I kind of stewed over that for a minute and was trying to figure out what to do. And then, um, I agreed to do an interview. So back in 2015, I did an interview um, anonymously with the Tennessean, which is the the big newspaper here in Nashville. 
And um, I talked about this whole struggle and what happened to me and, you know, why, how it affects me. I mean, this essentially is how I make my living. You know, this is how I support my family. This is how I uh, put food on the table for my daughter. It's how I pay my mortgage. It's how I pay my bills. So it's, you know, completely devastating to me to get shut down um, mm. and not be able to support my family like that. Uh, but I did that article. And then shortly after that, I got um, a call from a couple of amazing law firms. So these guys actually found me. They sought me out and reached mm. out to me because I, you know, made myself, well, I was anonymous, but they were able to find me through the article. And um, one of them is called the Institute for Justice. So it's this incredible firm that is in Washington, D.C. and also in um, Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, the the person I spoke to there is uh, the lawyer is Keith Diggs, who's just this fantastic, um, wonderfully motivated young lawyer who's just you know really driven to make real mm. change by helping protect people's rights around their homes and their 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 right to be able to make a living and survive, you know. Right. And another one is the uh, the Beacon Center right here in in Nashville, Tennessee. So um, uh, Brandon, uh, Bra excuse me. So Braden. Buchek, um, uh, reached out to me and, um, I talked to both these guys and we, we decided to all work together. So I just had this incredible, you know, fortunate bit of luck that when I was, you know, just hung out to dry and, and just out there all on my own and kind of stranded, not knowing what to do. Um, these guys reached out with a helping hand, which was really great. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So I know I'm telling, I'm pouring a lot out here all at once. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But um, that was, the, you know, that began with a lot of just kind of meeting. The very first thing I did actually was I started scheduling um, and arranging home studio meetups because I felt like if I'm going to do something, if I'm not going to just lay down and just, you know, quietly, you know, disappear because the city came down on me like this and I want to make a real statement and try and affect change, the first thing I wanted to do was find out does anybody else feel this way? You know, does anybody else want mm. change like this? So I organized home studio meetups and invited as many other engineers and musicians that I thought um, might care about this issue. I also invited some commercial studio owners and asked them every time I'd have a conversation with anybody, I'd find out, you know, if they had any feelings or thoughts about this. And I have to be honest, it was unanimous across the board that everybody felt uh, that this was just BS and that this was a problem that was shared by all of us and that it was not only did they support me trying to make a change with it, but they all felt like it was a change that absolutely needed to happen. Mm, right. So that was really encouraging, you know. That's awesome. You know, it's so shocking, you know, when you see people in government. So like Bjork we mentioned earlier, so like cards on the table – <laughs> I'm pretty libertarian leaning. So I'm like, dude, small government, personal rights, um, social freedoms, you know? So for me, this story is m absolutely mind blowing. It seems fictional. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. So, so big brother in such a bad yeah. way. It's like this 1984 thing. And what's so surprising to me about, um, that, that it, you know, I don't know if it's, it's people that just haven't been able to find a solution in your local government or what, but you think about where the world is going, this sort of economy 2.0 that's completely internet-based, that's completely work-from-home-based, that is where every single industry is going. Yeah. And you see their inability to grasp, like, hey, if, if this gets out, this harms Nashville as a brand. It undermines Nashville's brand as Music City. Uh, and that, yeah, I mean, it, it's just kind of, I mean, why would you want to squelch the source of where all this creativity is coming from, you know? Yeah, and you think about those, uh, you know, the people that are in power here, just their lack of knowledge about history, that like, you guys are Music City, and you need to understand what Music City means. Uh, Motown, home studio, literally built in a home, uh, more number one hits than anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Uh, Barry Hill in Nashville. It's its own little thing. Those are all homes. 
how many hit records have been recorded in Berry Hill and how much tax revenue have uh, people who have created records in their homes generated on those royalty checks that they've gotten uh, yeah, in I the think, city of Nashville? I think a lot. So just to clarify, for as specifically as far as Berry Hill goes, it is already like a commercially zoned neighborhood, but, but it was able to convert over to that too. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, property values in that area, uh, you know, and all around Nashville have just completely skyrocketed, you know, for somebody like me to be able to afford to just simply, you know, well, let's just pack up and go st open a commercial studio. Okay. Well, where are those extra hundreds of thousands of dollars going to come from? And, uh, by the way, you know, you're going to have to, uh, to, um, work out a lease arrangement and, uh, you know, that might, get pulled out from under your under your feet. So, you know, I, I just don't think that the that kind of approach to it would still allow me to be able to work with independent musicians in the way that I really mm. appreciate working. In fact, somebody asked me a question the other day. They were like, you know, um, uh, I think it was Channel 5 News, you know, if you could work with anybody you want, you know, who who would it be? And I think that, of course, they were hoping I'd, you know, mention somebody really super famous and everything. But honestly, you know, my answer was, I really love working with independent musicians. You know, I was always a big fan Same. of indie mm. college rock. I always was a real fan of the underdog, you know. And if I had my druthers, if I can use that word, um, it would be to just be able to walk from my home in the neighborhood down to a local, uh, you know, actually, you know, to a local club and go see a, a band that's, you know, just kind of starting and getting their feet wet and, and maybe has great energy and great attitude, but not a lot of money to record with. And I'd like to be able to invite them to come back and record with me in my home studio and make a really great sounding rock record or an acoustic record or, you know, an electronic music record, whatever, you know, I, I'm a big fan of a wide variety of music, or maybe it'd be nice to just kind of walk over to a neighbor's house and, and hear a band practice and then invite them to come over and play. I mean, that's kind of how we do things in Nashville. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot to be said there for, you know, this is a little bit of a rabbit hole, but there's a lot to be said for the joy of working on a record with somebody when the record is going to be life changing for them. As right. opposed to, nah, this is not going to be life changing. This is funded by a label, and the A and R guy and the manager are going to have a lot to say. It's so much more fun, I think, to yeah, to work with um, an up and coming thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, like that. And and I'm I'm just a fan of of um, bands that are you know doing really original kind of left of center stuff. And you know, I have no, I, I don't want to sort of uh, diss anybody who's doing making music on a, on a larger, more commercial scale. Of course, I am a huge fan of artists that are incredibly successful. And I'm a huge fan of the um, amazing commercial recording studios that we have available here in Nashville as well. I mean, there's tons of them. Yeah. I'm friends oh, with many sure. of them. And I've worked in many of them as well, you know. But um, I also wanted to talk about one of the, you know, you brought up this idea of uh, we're in this internet age now. And I totally agree with you. I think the internet is a huge component into allowing us to be able to uh, work from home and be able to have a home business. But I also want to clarify one of the things that really distinguishes Nashville compared to maybe some other places. Um, but, you know, of course, there is this option, you know, somebody might say, well, why don't you just, you know, uh, make music through the internet? You know, you don't have to have a customer come over. Um, and that is perfectly valid for some situations and some um, some styles of music, you know, where it's kind of like me and the computer or, um, you know, maybe people don't need to actually be in the same room to create. But one of the things that makes this place right here Music City is because it's one of the few places left where professional, great musicians get together and still make music face to face. And yeah, so, you know, that totally. for me, I really want to be able to uh, make a living from my home, from my home studio by um, and support my family by helping local musicians uh, make music together face to face in my home studio. Totally. Well, and I think this is one of the problems with sort of a big government mentality is the reason that law is no offense, Bjorgman. No, I mean, like, that's that's one of the biggest things. It's like there seems to be this massive lack of reasoning behind it. 
yeah. which makes it so much harder to swallow. Yeah. Well, the, I think the underlying philosophy is, you know, when you, you go to a restaurant, it's a local restaurant and they have all these signs on the door, no shirt, no shoes, no service, no skateboards, no strollers, no dogs. There's just a li- like a list of like 50 different things that are that are not allowed. I think when you have that mentality of rules solve problems, you know, by and large, they sometimes do. But when you say, well, one time a guy came in with a dog and the dog was barking. So we made it so nobody can come to our restaurant with a dog. We're going to punish everybody because of one bad experience. When government takes that mentality and says, well, this one time the studio was kind of loud. So we're going to say no one can do this anymore. It's just nuts. Yeah, but, but I mean, nobody Hinders. said that. Nobody said that. Right. That's the thing. That's pure speculation. Well, no, nobody I, no, complained about noise. There were no complaints about anything specific. There was well, just no, simply let me explain. an anonymous I'm not saying thing. That, yeah, I'm not saying that you made noise. I'm saying at one point. But I don't know. You can't even say that. We have no, well, there's no evidence that at I guess one point you're right. somebody complained uh, about Because there's music. no reason behind it. They just say it's like, you, we need you to stop this and we need you to take all your recording equipment and put it out and you can't podcast. Why? Just because. That's yeah. a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Well, well this, so let me, let me this, keep telling you guys the yeah, story too because it, it. it keeps going and I really want to <laughs> give the rock stars too a chance to kind of like I love this. know this, what's going on. So, um, you know, I did the article in the Tennessean and then um, IJ and the Beacon Center both reached out to me and we we chose to all just to start working together and so we started figuring things out Um, I started hosting home studio meetups right here at my studio and in other studios and also in another commercial studio to get kind of a feeling for what people thought and like I say everybody unanimously thought that it was a, a great idea and I should definitely do something about it and we're very supportive Um, you know, I think that one of the messages I got from a lot of people was that everybody was just afraid, you know, nobody wants to stick their neck neck out there because Mm. when you come to Nashville, um, and decide to make a career out of music and a career out of recording out of your, your home studio, I mean, it's like all in and there is not a lot of pie to share. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not trying to be uh, dissuasive, um, in this in this argument or this point, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's a common message from people on my podcast when I talk to them about making a living where people are just like, you know, you need to be um, diverse. You need to uh, do anything you can to just kind of stay in music professionally as a career and just hang in there. So, so everybody's, you know, everybody's really invested. Um, You know, it takes a lot of investment to collect the instruments and the microphones and the equipment that you want to record with. Um, Let's be honest, even having a really good computer to to have a recording session with, that's a pretty expensive investment. Mm. And so nobody wants to risk all that by, you know, sticking their neck out there unnecessarily and sort of drawing attention to themselves. But as a result, it also means that, you know, the majority of home studio owners and musicians that are making records in home studios are all doing so sort of, you know, secretively and, and yeah. have feeling like they have to be very discreet and hidden. And I honestly feel like that's no way to thrive, you know, yeah. there's no way to, to run your business or grow as a business. And I think that every single person who is making records in their home studio, everybody who's, um, you know, working together and collaborating and trying to make great music, try to make great music has an absolute 100% right to thrive with their music. There's no yeah. reason why we need added uh, challenges and, and difficulties as far as doing that. Well, I think from a government standpoint, you look at a city like San Jose, California, that's where Silicon Valley is. They have this rich heritage like Nashville of people coming out there with nothing to their name except a bag full of clothes, moving out there to pursue their dream, starting a business in a garage, making it work, and growing it into a powerhouse. And the list of businesses in San Jose that have changed the world, they were started in a garage and were run illegally, is huge. Apple Computers, biggest yeah, company in the world. I'm glad you said Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biggest company in the world started in a garage with a bunch of smelly teenagers. Well, that was 
Steve Jobs' problem to begin with was the smell, but that's a different story. <laughs> it's, it's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> but you, you think that. of the short-sightedness of the government officials in Nashville of like, I don't know if they recognize, maybe, maybe there's a lack of historical knowledge about Nashville there. Maybe, I don't know. But that's how Nashville has exploded. People have come there with nothing. <clears throat> They've started businesses. The businesses have grown the money has come. Oh, That's absolutely. the history of Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. It's all bootstrapped. They should call this place Music City. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. All right, so That's let, right. That's let right. me keep jumping forward, everybody. So yeah, we had these music, uh, the meetups for home studios. It was clear to me that everybody was supportive and everybody feels like change needed to happen. So then we started strategizing about ways to do that. And we discovered that there was at least... Uh, in my situation, there was an opportunity to apply for a rezoning for mm. my residence. So um, I went through a long process. It took me an entire year. Last year, I went through the whole process of applying for an SP rezoning, which is a specific plan, and was going to allow my residence to become a mixed-use um, residence commercial only as a home recording studio. So it was going to be very, very limited scope. Um, and it wouldn't allow me to do anything that was going to make changes to the residents. Um, you know, you can't put a sign out front. You can't um, start making loud noise. You can't, you know, start, you know, burning logs in your backyard and, and mm. generate smoke or some crazy thing like that. Uh, so basically, it would have allowed me to work from my home studio, but everything still looks totally like a residence. And, and I've got enough parking in my driveway for cars to park there. Um, again, it's totally soundproof. So it's a, it's not a noise issue or anything like that. Um, and I reached out to all the neighbors, like I was telling you, I went around neighbors came and offered an incredible amount of support, 40 petition signatures, um, which were delivered to the Metro council, uh, seven handwritten letters to the Metro council. I think 50 emails were sent into the council mm. um, to allow, you know, to show support. And when we had the public hearing, I had 15 neighbors come down to the hearing to be there ready to get up and speak and raise their hand and support and everything. So it was really overwhelming. And despite that, the Metro council couldn't, they couldn't um, approve my rezoning. They still turned it down. In fact, mm -hmm. it was really interesting to watch them have discussions up there because um, it was clear to me that they all recognized that home studios are part of the fabric of Nashville and are totally here and that they're important and that um, they exist on all kinds of levels. I mean, I think we have TV shows now that show home studios <laughs> being used. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, although I, I don't watch them as much. So I, 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 when my friends tell me that there's a TV show that has it, that's what, that's where I hear that from. But, um, you know, it's like they, they disapproved my home rezoning. And so because of that, the only option that was left to me was to just say, you know what? I'm going to fight this. I am not going to just take this line down and just, you know, crawl up and, and disappear and go away, sell my house, move somewhere else, uh, because I don't think that's fair to me and I don't think that's fair to anybody else mm. who's going through the same thing in Nashville. Um, so I decided to sue the city of Nashville. So, so that's what went down mm. this morning is uh, I was down. Um, we filed a lawsuit um, that is defending my constitutional right as a homeowner as uh, to make a living f um, and sustain myself here from my home. And uh, it was pretty exciting. You know, I went down and, and did a press conference downtown, like I was saying, and there was ABC News, NBC, CBS, Fox News, um, local uh, newspapers and radio. And it was just really wild. And in fact, my daughter, Soraya, came down with me and she stood with me there. She really wanted to be there. She was like, Daddy, if we do this, I want to be there too. Because, you know, she she grew up here. She's grown up in the house. She was literally born in my house. So I, I used to have all my studio is now in the garage, but I used to have it right in the house. 
And mm. what used to be the control room became my bedroom when I had my family and when she, she was born. And she was born inside of where the control room used to be. So where I used to go listen to uh, mixes and sort of like, you know, listen for the low end and get it just right. That's where she was born. So she's mm. grown up with this idea that like, it's the most normal thing in the world to just live in a home and have a studio in your backyard. And, and, you know, right. um, you make records and you're surrounded by music. Um, and yeah, so she just felt really strongly about being down there and, and, you know, making a statement as well. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think the thing that's interesting, I don't, I don't know much about what your lawyer strategy is, but you know, like I, I can see both sides of the coin here that some people would be like, well, I don't want, you know, and I saw this on the news on the, the, uh, was it channel six, the, the video that you put, that you shared, um, where a guy said, well, yeah, I don't want someone running a car garage next door to my house, you know, making a bunch of noise. Well, obviously, yeah, but the, so there's an argument there of like, yeah, the government should sort of regulate how that you don't want someone being a nuisance. Yeah, but, but you, this, you're describing something where it does, it's no longer like a residence, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think with your issue that there's been um, a phantom accuser, it does it violates your rights under the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution um, that you have the right to face your accuser. And there's no yeah. no one has said you're being a nuisance, and the government is just unilateral. And Nashville has unilaterally said um, that you are when nobody. And you have you have no recourse. That's well, bonkers and it's un-American. It's kind of scary to me when I think about this anonymous thing where it's like, I mean, I'm just making stuff up here. But what if it was somebody who just is, you know, uh, developing a property here in my neighborhood and they don't yeah, even right. live in this country, but they were able to right. access the web form or something, you know, I don't yeah. think there's a stipulation that the complaint has to come from anybody who's even affected like a neighbor, you know. Um, or, yeah. or, or you know, just a contract developer that lives in the U.S. and is American. Let's not bring the foreigners into this. <laughs> <laughs> I like foreigners. Um, I like foreigner four. I like. Uh, um, sorry, that was a little music reference there. All right. So where was I? So um, we filed the lawsuit this morning. Last night, um, Channel Five came and they did it. You know, they did an interview with me here, and then they posted it. And like I said, I I took my camera or my phone and I just videotaped the TV screen and shared that on Facebook because I was excited. And this morning I woke up to fifteen thousand views on the video already, and I could probably check it while we're talking. But I've barely been able to keep up. It's just an endless stream of you know Facebook uh, announcements and and comments and shares and everything. Because well, everybody is, is, feels pissed off about this. You know, they feel like personally like motivated to see something happen. People are Yeah. It's it's really wild, man. I've already gotten a I've gotten a message from somebody in Miami who's cheering me on. You know, I've gotten messages from um uh from another country where somebody's cheering me on. It's just so many people are feel like this is a right cause and that this needs to be changed. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just so obvious. Um, I've got two things I wanted to say. So I think it's so obvious the world is changing. People are working from home because of the internet. And what I would say to anyone in any local government that was acting the way that Nashville is towards small business, uh, particularly businesses that are as internet connected as yours is, this change for our society is happening. It is going to happen. And you are going to be on the right side of this or the wrong side of this. Ten years from now, people are going to look back and they're going to have an opinion about what happened when our economy had this massive shift. Yeah. And for these government officials that aren't either creative enough to come up with a solution or aren't motivated enough to come up with a solution, it's not going to be a good thing for your legacy. You, you want to be on the right side of this. And that's supporting this movement of people working in their homes with internet enabled businesses. Yeah. So let me, uh, Bjorkman, I want to hear what you think about this in, in, next, but um, I just wanted to add that one of the things that has been happening here in Nashville that has been really transformative. Uh Oh, do we lose Chris? You still there? Are you back? All right, cool. I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Internet dropped out for a second. Here we are talking about internet. And I was just about to talk about Google <laughs> fiber. So Google fiber came to Nashville and really spurred on the, um, 
you know, the installation of fiber networks all throughout the city where we supposedly mm. have fast internet now. <laughs> Um, but we also, you know, another thing Nashville did was we created the Entrepreneur Center. So we have an Entrepreneur Center right in downtown Nashville that encourages people to begin to uh, develop businesses using the internet, just, you know, become an entrepreneur and for sure yeah, what, work what, from home, you know? Yeah. Where do they think the entrepreneurs are going to start their businesses? Like in their in their living room, like like on their kitchen table. You know, yeah, yeah. Just better not have anybody come over to your house, though, right? <laughs> yeah, God forbid. God forbid somebody visits you at your house. You know, it's, yeah. So let's let's it's talk a, about home studios for a sec, guys. Yeah. You guys both both sitting in home studios right now. Yeah. Do you want to talk yeah, a little no. bit about what home studio means to you and and how you prefer to work from your home studio? Yeah, I mean, like my home studio is is like I couldn't live without it. I do a very diverse set of tasks tasks I, everything from recording and mixing and and doing audio production work but also doing um writing and creating courses and video tutorials and that sort of stuff and this space sort of acts as uh, like a multi-use space in so many different ways and it's also like when i'm in a band that re we sometimes rehearse here bands come over uh you know i record myself in here uh, so just, I could not, could I, I need this office to be able to run my own business and run all of my ventures. Uh, the, de the downside of a home studio is that, you know, the walls start closing in a little bit <laughs> if you're, if you're by yourself for a long time, which is why co-working spaces is also a great like method to sort of unplug out of, out of the loneliness of the home studio. But it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's just so important to have this space to be able to work from. Well, but I mean, you, know, you, you don't, you you don't have to pay rent. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I work with other musicians. They come over. I also work with a lot of people, a lot of people online. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's, a, there's a hybrid, you know, uh, workflow going on there. But a lot of the reasons why I can, you know, work and, and have a successful business is because I'm not paying hundreds of dollars in rent yeah. and I'm not paying all these additional expenses that that wouldn't keep me afloat and wouldn't be able to you know actually pay for the mortgage of the the rest of the house or put you know put food on the table yeah yeah so why don't you just pick up and go move into a commercial space and build a studio <laughs> right why don't you just what, go into even needed? more debt yeah, what's you know, needed for something completely like that? drown yourself in credit card debt just because the city said so. Like, well, that just doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't. And I think this gets to the underlying issue here of when you have people in, in government at any level, whether that's local, state, or national, if they don't understand how an economy works at even the most basic level, and the most basic level here is you, you decide to start a business, and you try to keep your expenses lower than your your income. You want to make more than you spend. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that just so revolutionary that, that I would say that out loud? Yeah. That's that's what you do when you start a business. You try to keep your expenses low and your revenues high. And if you can keep your revenues higher than your expenses, then the business grows. If you don't, you go out of business. Right. Pretty quickly. Historic, <laughs> quit it pretty quickly. Historically, you would have a hard time naming more than a dozen businesses they weren't started in that way that was where the kitchen table wasn't the first desk yeah, in the business right. well and, let's let's talk about nashville's businesses in fact um yeah. so there's a famous home studio in nashville's cowboy jack um clement's studio uh, where there are all kinds of great records made i'm not a historian so i won't try and list them all off the top of my head but nashville actually recognized it as a historical landmark <laughs> so I'm not sure how that all adds up, you know? So we're just inching closer and closer to hypocrisy at this point. Well, sort of. Let, let me share a little background wait, wait, here. Let me, I'm let, not... let me point out one more thing. See that little white thing on the door behind me? See that? Mm -hmm. That is yeah. um, called a Grammy. <laughs> 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 and that was a, a record I did with Mike Ferris was mixed here in the studio, and it won a Grammy. So, I mean, you know, I, I think that... um. I think that might at least help 
me feel a little bit like I'm also contributing something to the bigger picture, you know? Yeah. Uh, to well, the creative some of the economy issue, and the economy as a whole. Yeah. Some of the issue here, and I'm, I'm not an expert at this by any means, but there has been a huge movement over the past number of decades um, to more of a zoning style government, really strict zoning laws. And honestly, it wasn't the way the country was founded. There weren't zoning laws until relatively recently in our history. So I don't know at what point there was a move towards that from with the municipality in, in Nashville, but you know, Cowboy Jacks might have preceded zoning laws in Nashville. And you see this movement towards zoning is sort of in uh, intention with this movement towards home businesses. I, I don't you think know, I don't think there was a like a grandfather clause or anything like that. I think in fact I think our zoning um may have been around since the nineteen seventies. It's just that, well, that's, I think that's one of the things of that changed. Can. Let's let's look at it up from the surface for a sec. So why is this why is this maybe a little different than it was before? Uh, first of all, I don't think it is different because I know people who have um had the city bring the hammer down on their home studios um mm. going back a couple of decades. Um, but recently in my case, I think that it's possible that one of the reasons why it happened to me is because I was simply transparent. I actually took advantage mm. of the internet. I said, I'm going to use the internet. I'm, I don't need to change anything about my home or my home studio to make it look anything other than a home. However, why not use my website? Why not use YouTube? Why not use Facebook and do all the things that we all know we need to do as entrepreneurs and as, as business owners and you know, people trying to grow our brand or our business or make, you know, let, let the world know about our band. Um, yeah, we all need to use those presence. tools. Yeah. So that's yeah. all I did is I, you know, I, I had mm. an online presence and I think that it's possible that because I actually use the tools that are non-invasive, and actually don't really uh, cause any residential <laughs> problems um, that, that, that may have put me on the radar or something. But again, it's all speculation because uh, I, I can't face my accuser yet. Mm. Uh, so I don't even so know wild. what the complaint was. And when Codes actually contacted me, they didn't cite any particular aspect of the complaint. They didn't say it was noise. They didn't say anything about parking. They didn't say anything about anything other than my website, and my YouTube channel. So pretty yeah. crazy stuff. You wonder about just the nature of, you know, you hear the phrase, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Sure. You know, that, that power messes with people's heads. It damages them psychologically. You wonder, like, on a local government thing, is that, is, do they enjoy this? Oh, yeah, what's, the, what's, their, what's their end goal here? I, I, you know, it's a tricky it's a tricky question to answer because it it implies a they and I don't even think there is so much of a they I think we're talking yeah. about um, democracy I think we're talking about a system that for the most part totally works and sometimes you just it takes somebody willing to just put their ass out on the line like myself to make a real mm. statement and try and make a change for everybody. So that's where I'm at right now. And that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, I think we got to wrap up guys, but um, yeah, I want to, it, se uh, it seems, I mean, it just, it seems like it's just an example of institutional failure that needs to be revised. Yeah. yeah I think, amen. I think that's all it is. And I think we'll do it. And I think we got amazing support and I think um, we won't run into, uh, I mean, we won't do it without running into some, some obstacles along the way. And there may still be some people who feel strongly, um, you know, in opposition, but uh, I, I know that, that we have a right to be able to make a living and support our families and put food on our table um, and just make great music in music city. So um, Amen. Let me, let me uh, thank you guys for being here. I want to make one more statement before we go, just to kind of remind everybody where we're coming from and what's going on. So again, you guys know me. I'm Lid Shaw with Recording Studio Rockstars. My studio in East Nashville, Tennessee is called the Toy Box Studio. And, um, you know, I uh, want to be able to make records from my home studio and work with people to do that. Um I moved to Nashville 25 years ago uh, when I was 23 years old. 
my entire music career, you know, it was a dream of mine to have a home studio. When I saw the home studios in Nashville and I saw people doing that and I knew what kind of music I liked working on independent uh, with independent musicians, it was a dream to have a home studio myself one day. So I poured everything I had. Um, you know, I remember like the very first decade, every penny I made just went immediately into buying gear. I never, I never saved anything, mm. you know. Um, and I put together enough to have a studio in my home. And then um, I finally moved, you know, ha had my daughter and uh, got married at the time. I'm not married now, but uh, and now I'm single parenting. But I, I um, you know, moved the studio down to the garage and I invested everything into making sure the studio would function. So I'm all in. Right. And now I'm 50. And the city has come down and told me that it's time to uh, shut down your studio. Sorry, mm. you can't do that. And I'm like, uh, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, Nashville is a place, that, like I said, that is called Music City because it's where people still get together to make music face-to-face -face professionally, some of the greatest musicians in the world. And I believe that I have a right to do that as well from my home studio, support my family, make music right here. Um, put food on the table, pay my mortgage, pay my bills, and just continue to be a resident in East Nashville and continue to contribute to the community. Um, because it's, uh, it's almost like there's a life right. liberty. It's almost like there's a life liberty in the pursuit of happiness theme of what you're saying here, Lidge. <laughs> yeah, that, there might that, be a little bit of that. <laughs> that that's what you're doing, sort of this like the <laughs> Declaration of Independence predates this it's not it's not even constitutional it's declaration of independence all exactly you know that you're going after this but so but, so yeah no, i i just want to say I, I believe that i i you know have a right to do this so yeah i'm taking it uh to the to the city to the to the top for the people and um you know i'm here to fight for my right to record and for everybody's right to record as well um, because i believe that music's uh, mm. that home studios work in music city so, um, you know, don't let us be muted in Music City. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah. yeah. Lidge, how can we get involved? Yeah, I'm, thank I'm you so much up for being here, irritated. guys. Chris yeah. Chris, and Bjorgvin, um, shout out to you guys, rock stars. Uh, um, the best way to help out, the best way to get involved is to like this video, um, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, also, get involved with social media, anything that's coming from Recording Studio Rockstars or the Toy Box Studio. Um, you'll find us both on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you find anything that, that's good and compelling right there, please jump right into the discussion. Let us know how you feel about home studios and, you know, should we be allowed to make a living making records with other mm. musicians from our homes? I believe so. What do you think? Um, yeah. yeah. Both of you guys, thank you so much for being here. Bjorgvin Benedictson no from audioissues.com. Rockstars, Bjorgvin has incredible resources, free stuff right there to teach you how to record better. Bjorgvin, any particular stuff that they might want to go look for right away? Uh, I have a new book on Amazon, Better Mixes in Less Time, but otherwise just subscribe to the email list at audioissues.com. Awesome, dude. Um, and then rock stars, thank you also to Chris Graham from Chris Graham Mastering. Um, yeah. He is a wonderful sponsor of the podcast as well, too. So you, you may already be familiar with him. Um, if you are in the midst or nearing the point of finishing the mixes on your record, you may want to go check out just how good your record can sound if you go get it professionally mastered. Chris does amazing work. I, I just finished a record, which I'll be sharing with you guys soon, that Chris mastered for me, and it sounds I, awesome. Awesome. I can you. second that. I've also used his services. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, so Rockstars, uh, Chris also does a very cool thing. Chris, uh, thank you for letting me speak for you here. But um, yeah. you offer a free mastering sample to people who are considering – um, going to see what their record would sound like or what their a song would sound like if they got it mastered professionally. Um, Rockstars, if you want to yeah. go check that out, just go, use the link, which is in the show notes below too, um, rsrockstars.com slash free mastering sample. And that'll take you directly to Chris's website where you can go get a free sample master of your song. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I think... Uh... Um, I, I don't really want to plug myself. I want to talk Please more do, about what's man. going Please on do. with you, man. But yeah, if you guys are in the, in the process of, uh, you know, trying to finish your mixes, 
Uh, I always tell people the best thing you can possibly do when it comes to mastering is to have a mastering contest. Um, try to master it yourself and then send it to a couple other guys um, or girls and have them master a sample of one song um, and then see which one you like the best. It's a great idea. It's easy. It's cheap slash free. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'd love to master. I'd love to be part of that mastering contest for you. Um, so Chris, also you, uh, and then a reminder, rockstars, rsrockstars.com slash free mastering sample link is below. But, um, Chris, you also offer some mix coaching services and some sort of really cool things to help people kind of reach the finish line. Don't you? Yeah. So, um, and again, man, I don't want to talk about myself here. Um, but we just real quick, what we do uh, is when someone books a project with me, um, we do a free mix evaluation video as part of a mastering project. So people send people send us their files after they booked a project. We give them mix feedback on things they could do to improve their mixes if anything needs to be done. And then from there, new files are uploaded for mastering. Um, so yeah, we try to be helpful before, during, and after mastering. Awesome. Well, um, thank you both of you for being here with me today. Thanks for letting me kind of spill my story, um, which I've been... Keeping, Thanks for sharing. Keeping quiet for so long. I can't believe mm. it's been two years. I haven't really been able to talk about this until now. So, Rockstars, thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you're just discovering this for the first time, please go check out my podcast to, to help you make better records from your studio. It's called RecordingStudioRockstars.com. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of you around the studio, and I especially look forward to hearing what great records you make from your home studios, professionally or otherwise. Cheers. <laughs>